Hello friends and this is Vipul Purohit and I welcome you all to my YouTube channel. Now this video is all about the transition metals part 3. Okay, before this I have already uploaded two parts, part 1 as well as part 2. If anybody has missed out that, so please go through the description box. I am going to put up a link of part 1 as well as part 2. And only then please go through this video because it's a linkage it's a continuation so you understand the content of this video very well all right so when we continue from part two in the part two video i told you that transition series which i was talking about in the periodic table i said there are three series but what i meant by that three series was that the elements of these three series are being extensively studied with respect to its uh, uh, preparation with respect to its properties, whether it is physical properties, whether it is chemical properties, whether it is applications, etc. etc. So all these elements are being extensively studied the first three series. But actually, when you talk about the periodic table, okay, they are total four transition series. Okay, with the discovery of the element that is copper nickel, the atomic number is 112. Its symbol is CN the fourth transition series is also completed all right so we have i give you the atomic number so you understand this very well first series when we talk about okay that is scandium atomic number is 21 and it goes up to zinc atomic number is 30. next we go to ethereum which is 39 and it goes up to cadmium Atomic number is 48. Next we have Landinum, 57. And it goes up to Mercury and that is 80. And then we have Actinium with 89. And then I say Copernicum with 112. Okay, these are first, second, third and fourth series out of this now okay when i talk about the transition series and the d block elements definition transition series i told you are transition elements that is the elements in the atomic state or oxidation state have incompletely filled d orbital Okay, that means we are talking about from D1 to D9. And when we talk about a D block element, we say the last electron enters into the D orbital. Now here in this case, I want to say, I put a star mark over here. Okay, and that is element with atomic number 58 to 71. And here a double star. Atomic number 90 to 103. These series is called as lanthanides and actinides. So they are being excluded. So total number of 11 elements remains 10 only. Okay. 10, 10, 10, 10. Which are those D block elements? Because in all these elements, the last electron enters into the D orbital. So first of all, I use the word they are all D block elements okay with the exception of these elements all right so if you can count over here 57 to 80 okay if you can count it comes out to be how many 24 out of which you remove this 14 58 to 71 so it comes to 10 similarly 89 when we consider and it goes up to 112 so once again it comes to 24 exclude these 14 elements Okay, 14 elements which are lanthanides and actinides. So it comes out to be what? 10. So I guess this part is very clear to you. Okay, so therefore these series comes in this and this series comes in this. So they are inside this series. And therefore lanthanides and actinides are also called as inner transition series. Because this is a series, the transition series, and they are present inside that. And therefore lanthanides and actinides are called as what? Inner transition series. Anyways, the title of this particular video and what we are discussing right now it's all about transition elements 
So we are not going to discuss in detail about this. Now coming back over here is, if you go through the definition, what it says is either in the atomic state or the oxidation state, the transition elements should have what? Incompletely filled D orbital. Okay, that means this configuration has to be D1 to D9, any one of this. When you talk about zinc, atomic number is called 30 here. So its electronic configuration is 3D10, this is 4D10, this is 5D10, so this will be 6D10. Okay, in the oxidation state. And of course, if it is in the atomic state, then you have to add over here 4S2, 5S2, 6S2, and 7S2. But what I want you to understand over here that all these elements, zinc, cadmium, mercury, and copper nickel, or copper nesium it is called as, okay? So those elements do not come into this criteria of D1 to D9. And therefore I will say that according to this definition, they are not transition elements, okay? But in all these elements, the last electron enters into the D orbital, okay? And therefore we say they are D block elements. Understood this part? So, when I talk about with specifically with respect to the first series, second series, third series, zinc, cadmium, mercury, copper, nesium, okay, all these are D block elements, but they are not transition elements, okay, because they do not satisfy this particular condition. And on the basis of this, I want you to understand one very important statement and that is all transition elements are D block elements. All transition elements are D block elements. But all D block elements are not transition elements. Okay, this is what I want every one of you all to understand this statement. Okay, all transition elements. Okay, that means we talk about say scandium to say copper. Okay, and the rest of these elements, nine elements. In all these elements, what happens is that they have either in the atomic state or an oxidation state have incompletely filled D orbit. Okay? And at the same time, the last electron also enters into the D orbit. And therefore, they are transition elements as well as what? D block elements. So all transition elements are D block elements. But these examples I'm citing out for you. Okay? This example ke aadhar par hum kya bolenge? Ke D block to hai wo. Lekin kyunke unka completely filled D orbital nahi hai na to atomic state nor in the oxidation state and therefore we say they are not transition elements. So all transition elements are D block elements but all D block elements are not transition elements. Okay, so I hope you are very clear with this particular concept. Okay, so when you go for, if you want to go for the total numbers, okay, so we need to exclude these. So if I have 10, 10, 10 for all the four series, so 40, you exclude this four, so it comes out to be what, 36. Okay, now one more thing which I want to tell you is, the contents of my videos are much more student oriented. Student ke nazariye se me videos banata hon. Aur jab me student ke nazariye se video banata hon, to mujhe apne aap ko kai had tak, apne ek simit daire me rakhna hai mujhe, aur wo hai syllabus ke daire me. And it can be like that whenever a syllabus being is being introduced, there are some concepts which are there introduced in that. So I need to just make sure that the students understand that. Okay, so my job is that. Okay, as a teacher for a student is to how effectively, okay, transfer the syllabus content into the brains of my students. Sometimes what happens is after the syllabus is being framed and all, there are some recent studies also, which may not be incorporated into the syllabus. So that is what I am not going to incorporate in this particular video also. Okay, otherwise the students will get confused. Because my prime focus is what students understand the concept of chemistry. Okay, whatever, up to whatever uh, limit of uh, the syllabus is. Okay, so that they start liking the subject. Okay, because me as a chemistry teacher, my first purpose is my students has to like my subject. Okay, and that is what my intention is. 
Now, with this reference, I want to give you one example, and that is why am I saying all these things? Okay, you must be also thinking, why is he talking about all these things? So, I will give you an example, data, and that is the recent studies have modified. There is still a modification in the statement of this transition element, in the definition of this transition element. Okay, and that modification, my dear friends, it is just for your knowledge, my dear friends. Once again, I tell you, okay, otherwise, as per the, the curriculum, as per the syllabus, we need to just consider this. But as an extra information, I'm just telling you, and that the new definition which has come up according to the recent studies, the modified definition, and that is transition elements are all those elements which have any one of the stable ions containing incompletely filled d orbital the elements in any one of the stable ions having incompletely filled d orbital now they are specifying over there the word is what ions ions means what am i talking about charged species all right so in that respect now they are not considering atomic state they are considering what ionic state and that also a stable ion that should have this configuration of d1 to d9 and if i am going to strictly apply this particular modified definition of transition element then i would like you to understand that scandium goes out of the picture because for scandium the most stable configuration okay or the most stable ion is plus three and when you talk about scandium in the plus 3 state, what is this atomic number? 21. Plus 3. 10 electron hata do. Kidna pachega? 18. And 18 is the but it is the inner gas configuration of kiska argon. Alright. So therefore, if it is a configuration of argon, it's an inert gas configuration. So d orbital ka to savali peta nahi hota. Okay? So we cannot have this d1 to d9. Am I clear with this part? So scandium goes out of the picture. It is not a transition element according to the revised modified definition of transition element. But as I said, okay, we want to be within the limits of the syllabus. So accordingly, we are here right now considering only one simple fact that is an element either in the atomic state or the oxidation state have an incompletely filled d orbital and we call it as a transition element. Of course, the bifurcation is there in the syllabus between a transition element and a d-block element. Okay, so according to the definition, okay, if you can see the syllabus also very well, it's very clearly said that zinc, cadmium, mercury, and of course this new element that is copper nisium is not a transition element. Okay, they are simply d-block elements. And because of that, I have given you this statement. All transition elements are d-block elements, but all d-block elements are not transition elements. I am sure all of you are getting this absolutely right. All right? All right. Now we go into the next case, and that is about transition elements characteristics. Okay, what are the characteristics of transition elements? Characteristics of transition elements. Now see, as I told you before, that in part one only I told you that all transition elements are metals. So, any properties metals will show, they will transition elements. Okay? And some properties, like the first property is, it is a good conductor of heat and electricity. Good conductors of heat and electricity. Okay, everybody knows about this. It's all about flow of electrons taking place. Okay, because they are going to lose electrons and therefore they are going to go, go from one particular state to the another state. And always remember that conductivity is not because of the presence of charged species. It's because of the presence of mobile charge species. The charge species has to move, has to flow from one point to another. Then only they are responsible for the flow of current or heat. Okay? Otherwise, what will happen is all the elements present in the periodic table, they will be conductors of heat and electricity. Why? Because of the simple reason that every element has at least one electron. An electron is a charge species. So, if a charge species is a substance conductor, then all the periodic table will be elements conductor. But it is not that. Because electron is not a conductor. Flow of electron is a conductor. 
ओके तो ये बात आप याद रखिएगा तो इस हिसाब से यहां पर फ्लो ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स होने वाला है बिकॉज़ दे आर मेटल्स एंड देयरफॉर आई से दे आर वेरी गुड कंडक्टर्स ऑफ हीट एज वेल एज इलेक्ट्रिसिटी ओके दैट्स पॉइंट नंबर 1 नेक्स्ट पॉइंट है एंड दैट इज दे आर मेलियेबल एंड डक्टाइल ओके व्हाट आर दे दे आर मेलियेबल एज वेल एज डक्टाइल यू नो दिस वेरी वेल ओके ड्रॉन इनटू शीट्स इज मेलियेबिलिटी एंड इनटू वायर्स इज नथिंग बट व्हाट डक्टिलिटी ओके सो इट्स मेलियेबिलिटी एज वेल एज डक्टिलिटी ऑल दीस आर बेसिक्स सो आई डोंट वांट टू गो इनटू मच मोर डिटेल्स ऑन दिस ओके नेक्स्ट पार्ट दैट वी टॉक अबाउट एंड दैट इज इट हैज गॉट अ हाई मेल्टिंग पॉइंट बॉइलिंग पॉइंट एज वेल एज डेंसिटी Okay, because see, they are metals, and most of the metals are solids, except for mercury. Okay, metals solids, but then there is mercury, which is a metal, but it is a liquid. But generally, they are solids. And when I talk about solids, the force of attraction is very strong. And if I want to break those strong force of attraction, I need to supply large amount of energy. Okay, and that is what we do. Okay, when you talk about the melting point as well as the boiling point. Of course, the values are different for a particular element. Okay, if I have a particular element, say x. Okay, I won't say that the melting point and the boiling point are exactly same. There will be a difference because the process which is happening in this melting point and boiling point there is a difference. What is the difference, my dear friends? And that is, okay, in melting point we are giving energy. In boiling point also we are giving energy. But in melting point when we are giving energy, our purpose is to make the bonds weaker. And as a result of it, that solid gets converted into a liquid. But in a boiling point, when we are giving energy to a solid, so that means the solid is first getting converted into liquid due to weakening of the bonds, and still energy is being given so that the bonds break completely and that liquid gets converted into what vapors, and that is boiling point. And therefore, we have to provide extra heat, okay, so that that liquid gets converted into vapor, and therefore we say the boiling point is greater than melting point. So melting point is all about weakening of bonds, and boiling point is about breaking of bonds. ओके okay, अभी इस सिंपल सी बात है दोस्तों किसी को कमजोर करने का है और किसी को तोड़ने का उसमें अंतर है ना ओके okay, अगर किसी को तोड़ देने का है तो उसको ज्यादा एनर्जी देना पड़ेगा एज कंपेयर टू किसी को कमजोर करना है ओके सो दिस इज व्हाट वी नीड टू टॉक अबाउट मेल्टिंग पॉइंट एंड बॉइलिंग पॉइंट दोनों हाई है उसका अब डेंसिटी की बात करते हैं यू नो अबाउट द क्रिस्टल लैचेस ऑफ अ सॉलिड वेयर वी टॉक अबाउट क्लोजली पैक्ड लैटिस वेयर द एटम्स और द आयंस और मॉलिक्यूल्स व्हिच वी सिंपली कॉल एज पार्टिकल्स दे आर क्लोजली पैक्ड क्लोजली पैक मतलब क्या है कि दे आर फोर्स ऑफ अट्रैक्शन इज हाई फोर्स ऑफ अट्रैक्शन अगर ज्यादा है तो इसका मतलब मोर नंबर ऑफ पार्टिकल्स आर गोइंग टू ऑक्यूपाई अ गिवन स्पेस यानी वॉल्यूम तो कांस्टेंट है दोस्तों लेकिन नंबर ऑफ पार्टिकल्स ज्यादा है तो मास भी ज्यादा है और डेंसिटी का फॉर्मूला तो आपको मालूम है इट इज मास अपॉन वॉल्यूम सो इफ द वॉल्यूम इज कांस्टेंट एंड द मास इज मोर सो वी से द डेंसिटी इज डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू द मास एंड देयरफॉर वी से इफ द मास इज हाई सो डेंसिटी इज आल्सो हाई so that is what it is so high melting point boiling point and density theek okay? hai next one is they are going to show a property of luster okay ek shine dikhayenge chamak dikhayenge ye okay uska ek simple reason is of course there is a much more details into that okay but i don't want to go into that detail of that but in a very short simplified form i'll try to explain you this and this is with respect to energy i have a ground state and i have a excited state do state hote hai mere paas कौन सा कौन सा ग्राउंड स्टेट और एक्साइटेड स्टेट तो इनिशियली आई कॉट इलेक्ट्रॉन इन द ग्राउंड स्टेट देन आई सप्लाई एनर्जी टू दिस इलेक्ट्रॉन ओके एंड एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ दिस इलेक्ट्रॉन गोज टू द एक्साइटेड स्टेट ओके ऐसे जाएगा अभी एक्साइटेड स्टेट इज कंपेरेटिवली अनस्टेट एंड देफोर दिस इलेक्ट्रॉन इफ इट ट्राइज टू कम बैक टू द ग्राउंड स्टेट तो कैसे होगा सिंपल है दोस्तों ग्राउंड स्टेट से एक्साइटेड स्टेट कैसे जा रहा है एब्जॉर्बशन ऑफ लाइट और एब्जॉर्बशन ऑफ एनर्जी ओके तो एक्साइटेड स्टेट टू ग्राउंड स्टेट कैसे जाएगा ऑपोजिट है उसका रिलीज ऑफ एनर्जी ओके सो एनर्जी इज रिलीज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ लाइट एंड देयर फॉर इट शोस व्हाट लस्टर शाइन ओके चमक दिखाता है वो ओके एंड दैट इज व्हाट वी टॉक अबाउट हियर एंड इट इज लस्टर सो फ्रॉम अ एक्साइटेड स्टेट टू अ ग्राउंड स्टेट इट गिव्स अवे एनर्जी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ लाइट एंड दैट इज गोइंग टू बी नथिंग बट लस्टर okay that is what is going to be shown and that is only by means of what the loosely held electrons okay it is possible for that and metals do have that tendency to lose electrons and therefore all these things is possible okay to dosto ye jo main aapko bata raha hu good conductors of heat and electricity malleability and ductility high melting point boiling point density luster ye sab common properties 
okay most of the metals i won't use the word all okay because chemistry is like you cannot generalize everything there are exceptional uh, cases because chemistry is so vast okay so there are certain here and there cases are there so i will use the word generally okay ye word bahut important hai dosto abhi chahiye yaad rakhiyega ye okay so generally okay all these metals have these properties theek hai abhi hum baat karenge thoda sa special about which one yes the transition elements and that is they are going to show variable oxidation state what is my variable oxidation state is means one element showing more than one different oxidation state okay ye dikhane wale hu of course i'll be discussing in detail later on lekin yahan par main batana chahta hu aapko for the first series if you remember i gave you the electronic configuration like this where i used two orbitals 3d as well as 4s and i explained you also the reason why because the energy difference is less okay so whatever energy i require to remove the electron from 4s slightly extra i give the energy so the electron from the 3d also will be removed and therefore i have electrons from two orbitals 3d as well as 4s and therefore i will be having more number of electrons variable number of electrons and therefore they are going to show variable oxidation state so this is slightly different from the conventional metals when i talk about conventional metal means i hope you understand main jab iski baat karta hu yani main s block elements ki baat karta hu i s block elements ke sare ke sare elements are strongly metallic of course d block elements bhi sab metals hi hai lekin s block wale strongly metallic hai okay calcium hua magnesium hua sodium hua potassium hua ओके ये जनरली एक ही ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट दिखाते हैं सोडियम पोटाशियम लिथियम ओके रुबीडियम वो प्लस वन दिखाएंगे ओके बेरिलियम हुआ मैग्नीशियम हुआ कैल्शियम हुआ बेरियम हुआ स्ट्रॉन्शियम हुआ वो प्लस टू ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट दिखाएंगे यानी जनरली ये सिंगल ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट दिखाते हैं जनरली या प्लीज ये जरा याद रखिएगा ये शब्द को तो जनरली ये एक ही ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट दिखाते हैं लेकिन ये जो ट्रांजिशन एलिमेंट्स है वो अलग अलग ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट दिखाते हैं मैंने उसको ब्रीफ में आपको इसका रीजन बता दिया इन डिटेल आई डिस्कस इट लेटर ऑन ठीक है ये हो गया वन प्रॉपर्टी द नेक्स्ट प्रॉपर्टी दैट वी डिस्कस ओके अबाउट द ट्रांजिशन एलिमेंट्स एंड दैट इज दे आर गोइंग टू शो कलर ओके दे आर गोइंग टू बी मोस्ट ऑफ देम आर कलर्ड ओके मोस्ट ऑफ द ट्रांजिशन एलिमेंट नॉट ऑल मोस्ट ऑफ देम ओके आर कलर्ड ओके क्यू मैं बताऊंगा बाद में उसका रीजन ओके okay? लेकिन अगर उसको कंपेयर किया जाए विद कन्वेंशनल मेटल्स सोडियम देखा होगा आप लोगों ने पोटेशियम देखा होगा आपने कैल्शियम देखा होगा मैग्नीशियम देखा होगा बेरियम देखा होगा आपने स्ट्रांशियम देखा होगा आप लोगों ने दे आर ऑल कलरलेस लेकिन दीज ट्रांजिशन मेटल्स आर गोइंग टू शो वॉट कलर ओके सो राइट ना आई एम जस्ट शोइंग अबाउट वट आर द प्रॉपर्टीज विच आर स्लाइटली डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द कन्वेंशनल मेटल्स वो मैं डिस्कस कर रहा हूँ आप लोगों के साथ अब क्यों क्या वजह है उसकी प्लीज ओके इन द कमिंग अपकमिंग वीडियोज ओके आई टेल यू ऑल दीज थिंग्स ओके इसलिए प्लीज मैं हमेशा बोलता हूँ आपको प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू माई चैनल सो दैट यू कम टू नो अबाउट द अपकमिंग वीडियोज एंड देर फॉर द कंटिन्यूटी इज मेंटेन ठीक है सो द नेक्स्ट प्रॉपर्टी इज अबाउट कलर ओके नेक्स्ट थिंग इज most of these are paramagnetic okay most of these are what paramagnetic so that means they contain a single electron okay unpaired electron like this like this or is there in the magnetic field they are going to experience a force of attraction okay para thoda modify karo na usko pyara karo para pyara okay to kabhi gadbad nahi hoga okay nahi to kya hota gadbad ho jata para magnetism or diamagnetism So this is the way you need to remember. Para magnetism, para para force of attraction. So obviously, di magnetism means force of repulsion. Okay. So as long as the magnetic field is acting on it, okay, it, the particular substance is going to experience the force of attraction. Okay, that is para magnetic substance, and that is because of the presence of single electron. Okay. कभी कभी अल्कलाइन अर्थ मेटल्स की बात करते हैं कैल्शियम एंड मैग्नीशियम एंड ऑल दैट दे हैव गॉट पेड इलेक्ट्रॉन्स एंड देयर फॉर दे आर नॉट गोइंग टू शो पैरा मैग्नेटिक्स इन द नॉर्मल केस ओके दे विल बी शोइंग डाई मैग्नेटिज्म सो दिस इज वन पार्ट और ट्रांजिशन एलिमेंट्स की मैं बात करूं व्हिच आई वाज टॉकिंग अबाउट d1 से लेकर d9 यू ट्राई टू अरेंज द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन व्हिच एवर वे यू लाइक आई गिव यू अ ओपन चैलेंज व्हिच एवर वे यू वांट टू अरेंज व्हिच एवर वे मतलब रूल के हिसाब से आपके हिसाब से नहीं ओके आप किसी भी तरीके से अकॉर्डिंग टू द रूल यू ट्राई टू अरेंज आई गिव यू अ ओपन चैलेंज के देर विल बी एटलीस्ट वन सिंगल इलेक्ट्रॉन मैन यू टॉक अबाउट डी वन टू डी नाइन कम से कम एक सिंगल इलेक्ट्रॉन तो रहेगा ही ओके और इसलिए मैंने यहां पर बोला है कि दे आर गोइंग टू बी वॉट पैरा मैग्नेटिक 
Oh, ferromagnetism and all go to Srika. Okay, so it's the next case. But at least they are going to be one paramagnetic, at least containing one single electron. Okay, so that is another property which is different from the conventional ones. Okay, next one is they form complex compounds. Yeah, then we call coordination compounds. Okay, now to see what we Coordination compounds, a bond which is going to be formed between a metal and a ligand. Okay, ligands are electron donors, metals are electron acceptors, etc. etc. Okay, coordinate covalent bond. Hota hai. Okay, so here, what I want to say is they form complex compounds, they form coordination compounds to a very greater extent. When you consider all the coordination compounds, whichever are being now synthesized, okay, and they are being confirmed, their presence, that means they are stable. Okay, jiska astit wo hai, wo stable hai. Okay, because that is what is the simplest way of what is stability is. Okay, stability is related to existence. If it exists for a longer period of time, it is stable. Okay, which does not exist at all or which exists momentarily, kuch pal ke liye exists karega, to hum log usko kya bolenge? Unstable. So, jitne bhi stable complexes hai, agar hum usko consider kiya jai, so majority of the complexes, once again, kaun se shat pe dhyan dhere ka hai? Majority. All nahi bola hai man. Nahi tar, wo earth ka anarth ho jaye ka. Okay? Mein aapko bol raha hu, majority of the complexes mein, jo metal hai, that is a transition element. Okay? Majority of them. Of course, isme, mein aisa nahi bol raha hu ke dusre nahi banate hai. There are certain p-block elements which forms many complexes. There are selanthanides, there are actinides, they are going to form complexes. Yes, I do agree with it. Lekin mein yaha pa kya bol raha hu, majority of the elements are transition elements which is a central metal and forms what? Complex compounds. Okay, to ye ek aur category ho gaya, iska. Next one is, it behaves as a very good catalyst. Majority of them behaves as a very good catalyst. Okay, catalyst you know very well. You've been learning this, hearing this for from a long time now. Okay, catalyst is a kind of substance that brings about what? A alteration. Okay, in the rate of the reaction. You understand the word alteration? Yes. Either decrease or increase. But most of the time it is increasing the rate of the reaction. And sometimes it is decreases the rate of the reaction. Sometimes what happens is we want that the reaction should go to a, with a slow speed. Then I add a substance. Okay, that way also it happens. Okay, so catalyst is a substance which is going to alter the rate of the reaction. Okay, without itself undergoing a chemical change. So, there are most of the transition metals, many transition metals. They are going to show catalytic behavior. Okay, so these are the ones. Okay, from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These are the properties slightly unique, slightly different from the conventional metals. Okay, just like sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium and all that. Okay, they are not always going to show a catalytic property. They are not always going to be colored. Okay, they are not going to show coordination compounds always. Okay, but these are the substances or transition elements which are going to show these properties. Okay, so that's why I say and I've used the words, almost, okay, most of them, okay, generally, ye sab yaad rakhi ka dosto. Okay, because there are many exceptional cases also. So, ye kuch properties hai, kuch alag hai, kuch hatkar hai, kuch unique hai, as compared to the conventional ones, and these are the common properties, okay, which the non-transition metals also shows and the transition metals also shows. So, I guess, I guess the concept is getting clear with respect to what? The characteristic of transition elements. I hope everybody understood this very clearly. Yes?